Cluj Napoca, Romania, and I'm here with Jason Street. How are you, Jason? I'm doing great. Thank you. Great. Uh, it's funny. Uh, you yesterday you are the only Americans here yes. in <laughs> this conference, an IT camp in Cluj. Uh, Tim Huckabee's here today. I haven't talked to him yet. Yep, so I, now there's I, three Americans. I just got finished uh, playing with the Hololens a little bit, so it's like the uh, Hololens. Oh, really? That's yeah. fun. Was, I didn't know he brought nice. one, uh, but yeah. he's a popular guy now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, it's funny because I've never met you before, and we had to, I had to come to Transylvania. Yep, exactly. It's, it's a weird world, <laughs> stuff you know. It's like uh, every once in a while. All right, and what do you do? Uh, I am a. Uh, I wear many hats. Uh, I am a uh, assistant vice president of information security for a national financial institution. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also the infosec ranger for Pony Express, and then I do uh, pen testing and security engagements and security awareness engagements through Stratagem One. Hmm. What's an infosec ranger? A lot of people ask that question. Uh, it's really an undefined. I'm sort of like the uh, spokesperson and the the bridge between the red team and the blue team world of uh, Pony Express. They they uh, create equipment for uh, red teamers, which is the pen testing side where they do the actual attacking tools. Okay. But they also develop uh, sensors and deployment tools to actually help the blue team, which is the defensive people, to build people to defending their networks. Okay, the blue team is interested in uh, putting up walls to protect the network, and the red team is testing those walls by pretending Correct. to be hackers. Exactly. All right, got it. Let's talk about security because you're obviously a security guy. Yes. And you've got a, a lot of expertise in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, what should I be most scared of if I'm a business owner? Uh, if you're a business owner, the most the thing you should be scared of the most is an uneducated employee on security ah, it's not technology it's no people it's like it's uh every, i mean target was a huge breach human mm. error right. someone clicked on a phishing link uh sony human error it's like people were were downloading malware there was an insider threat uh some of the biggest breaches that have occurred were based on uh human interaction not computer interaction it was human interaction hmm. so uh, when employer, uh, employers and companies start teaching their employees from the get-go, from day one in their new hire orientation on how to be better secured and how to understand what kind of threats are out there, the less attacks you're going to start seeing. Hmm. So that, is that your job then is to educate employees to change behavior within organizations? Uh, when I do the strategy one stuff, yeah, I don't do um, actual full red team engagements. What I what I call my uh, the things that I do is called uh, security awareness engagements. It's like hmm. I actually don't just physically compromise the facility or break in or do a phishing or social engineering engagement. After I do that successfully, I go back into the facility two minutes later and educate every person that I compromised, I go to them one-on-one -on -one saying, by the way, when you just let me in, I was a bad guy. Right. And this is what I was doing, and this is what you need to learn from the cues that I was doing that don't let this happen again, because the next time it's gonna be someone that's actually real, the hmm. real threat. Okay, so you are actually posing as the bad guy yes. and breaking in. I'm is very that... good at being a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I totally believe you. Yes, <laughs> but only for good reasons. Uh, you're a good bad guy. Uh, the, the white hat. Yes, is, mm -hmm. is what I think they call it. Um, uh, what else? Tell me, give us some uh, advice to people that are uh, how they can make their employees better educated. Um, I, th I think. Uh, I mean, if you want to, uh, there's several things that I think that uh, any employer can do uh, to help better secure their infrastructure. One, they have to learn how to do employment, uh, employer, edu employment education employee education, uh, they need to learn how to keep their systems patched and updated. Uh, I mean, the second Tuesday of every month, Microsoft mm. Patch Tuesday, that is necessary. It's like, okay. uh, it There's is- There's a lot of bug fixes in there, a lot of vulnerability fixes in there. Exactly, it's like, I mean, it, it is funny because I, I tell people it's like, and a lot of people will agree with me and some will vehemently disagree with me, but they're wrong. Uh, <laughs> Microsoft is one of the most secure operating systems now because of the fact that they've learn by the trial by fire how to yeah. keep their system secured uh and so and but people will keep that balloon going or that that little shield going saying do you want to reboot your machine now to apply the patches and say no i downloaded them installed them i'm good i don't want to lose that downtime you have to make sure the employees are actually in, uh, installing and applying the patches okay it's like rebooting the machines 
keeping your, your patch cycle up, keeping uh, not just the operating system, but keeping the applications. Adobe uh, needs patches. Java mm -hmm. needs patches. There's other. Adobe needs a lot of patches. Oh my God. <laughs> and God. it's still not, and let's be it's, honest, it's still not enough. <laughs> it's I, like, spend, well, I spend more time <laughs> patching Adobe than I actually do using the uh, Adobe uh, products. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, I mean, so you got to keep, make sure your systems are patched and that trumps most antivirus. Right. It's like and if so you it's just a race. have a patch system. You know, it's like a, we're, leap, we're leapfrogging, the, leapfrogging the hackers. Yeah. They're like, inventing well, new hacks. Well, not hackers, criminals. It's like attackers. So it's like, I've always been very animated. It's like, because um, I always tell people, like, I'm a hacker. It's okay. like, uh, and, and people look at me like, you're a hacker? It's like, no, no. I'm a hacker. It's like when, there, there, I don't believe that there's a, uh, a, a like a, a bad hacker or a good hacker. There's hackers, then there's criminals. Okay. If a banker goes in, uh, does embezzlement or money fraud they're not a black hat banker they're a criminal it's <laughs> okay, like it. so it's the same thing with that so it's like i i like always like making that decision because i've seen so much in the press lately with uh people going off on on how uh a hacker did this or like i'm like no a freaking criminal did that and they weren't very good at it either yeah. so it's like <laughs> Uh, we only hear about the bad ones because we only hear about the ones that get caught. Exactly. It's <laughs> like, and that's, that's, that is the sad part. It's like one of the favorite ones, uh, one of the famous ones I like is Dan Kaminsky. Okay. Uh, he's a great hacker. He actually uh, helped save the internet way back in the day. It's like, like 2004 or something like that. But uh, with DNS, he figured out a flaw in DNS and helped get it secured and helped with all the major OEMs, all the vendors, uh, work together and collaborate to, to help uh, patch this huge DNS flaw. Hmm. But he also created a colorblind app uh, for mobile devices for people that are colorblind to help them see through filtering. It's like hmm. it was a really cool. So he did a whole bunch. I mean, it was the true essence of a hacker. It's right. like, you know, just the inventor, the curiosity. So it was like save the Internet, help, help cool. colorblind people. All right. Let's get back to security a little bit. I, yes. um, you said there's all kinds of human errors. One is. Uh, or I shouldn't say errors, human vulnerabilities. Right. Um, and one is just making sure that they know that patches are important. Uh, for right. You, you've been in a lot of organizations where you've basically tricked people into holding the door open for you and yes. letting you in. Uh, what's, what's, you know, what's a really common thing people, you just see people doing wrong over and over again? I think um, looking at emails and thinking that they're safe. Okay. Uh, we have a, uh, people think that, okay, because this email says, one thing that it's got to be true. It comes from this person. That they they don't understand how easy it is to spoof an email address, uh, how easy it is to look like it's coming from a legitimate source when it's not really right. uh, legitimate. So uh, once we teach, I mean, and, and it's one of the simplest things because in human nature, it's like, were you expecting that email from someone with that link in there? Right. Then why did they send it to you? It's like that you should. Those are questions you should ask and just say, hey. Maybe I can use this mobile device that I do my Facebooking and Twitter and everything. Maybe it can make phone calls. And maybe I can call that person and yeah. say, did you send me this email with the link? <laughs> and they never go to that next step. Right. It's like, so. That's so remember, because there was a time <laughs> when uh, phones were used for making calls to Ex people. That was the primary purpose. Of, it's, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's back when M MTV used to have music videos. Oh, like yeah. Those was the, I the M stands for music. That's, that's <laughs> how old I am. I the remember those. Phones, <laughs> that's because it's called that because there's a phone in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like it's a computer that makes phone calls. <laughs> uh, you're, um, you're talking about this a lot uh, around the world, apparently. Uh, yes. I, uh, I, I just uh, actually came off of a month-long trip to Asia, oh. uh, which was like I was in uh, Beijing, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Singapore, Thailand, and Cambodia. Oh, wow. I've never been to any of those places. Oh, they're fun. It's exciting. It was it was a very long trip, but it was. Is it to, uh, speaking engagements, or are you working uh, there? Uh, most of it was speaking engagements through uh, the DefCon uh, groups. I'm the DefCon groups global coordinator. I see. Uh, which uh, is DefCon is a huge hacking conference in Vegas, but we like creating these DefCon groups to help um, communities, hacker communities around the world, uh, get together, collaborate, and uh, helping their community and just helping each other learn. Uh, uh, different skills and uh, different methods and methodologies. Very cool. Are you writing about this as well? Uh, not too much. It's like uh, I've done some blog posts. It's like uh, I've, I've written two books so far. I'm working on my third one. It's, the, mm. it's a trilogy. Uh, but those are more of like an introductory books on information security. It's a fictional story mm. with a technical uh, book at the end. So there's two books in one. Mm. So as you're reading the fictional story and they do a hack or they do an attack, uh, you actually, there's a number with a star and you can go to that page in the back and actually see exactly how it was done 
I mean, the real educational standpoint ah, of how it was done. So the footnotes are the educational part of that. Exactly. The front half of the book is the entertainment part. Of it. Yes. It's a true example of edutainment. That's exactly what I call it. Very well. <laughs> that right? Awesome. Yeah, that's what I call it, edutainment. Yes. Very cool. Uh, any other bits of advice you can give us? Um, well, I would say it's like um, every person has a strong sense of this doesn't seem right in the back of their head. Uh, follow that more. Listen to that. Okay. And uh, also, you don't need antivirus uh, on your systems if you have just a good, healthy fear of what you're coming in and what you're seeing and skepticism. Uh -huh. Not saying, um, don't turn that into, Jason said you don't need antivirus. It's <laughs> like it's like all layers help, but there is no one solution. There is no silver bullet. Uh, and, and I'm so tired of the whole, you know, there's different layers. and, and they, It basically comes down to make sure that you're protecting yourself in every way possible that you can okay. it's like you can never have too much protection uh and you can never have too much healthy skepticism uh, so there's a lot of doors into any organization or into, into any computer system right uh the more of those doors you can close the safer it'll be exactly i look at a network and you should treat your network not like um a castle wall but it's like a fire safe okay. if you go and look and try to buy a, a, a fireproof safe mm -hmm. You'll never see on the on the on the on the uh, platform on the little placard that it says that it's fireproof. It'll say fireproof up to four hours or I up see. to six hours. That's basically what you want from your network. You want it to be able to withstand an attack long enough for you to detect that an attack is going on right. and you can respond to it. Or to be to make an attack so expensive that it would cost the bad guys more to attack. Exactly. Then they will actually gain. More time they're exerting too much uh, resources to actually yeah. make it successful. Yeah. Uh, excellent stuff. Where, where are you speaking next? Uh, St. Louis and Hack in Paris. Uh, so it's like uh, actually in Paris uh, at the end of June. Say, oh, say, not St. Louis, Missouri. St. No, St. Louis. No, Louis, Missouri. Oh, uh, and then I think it was like a, a week or two, then uh, Hack in Paris. You're a traveling man. Jason, nice oh. for taking the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Always remember, technology be can be your friend or your enemy. It all depends on how you use it. <laughs>